Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Whitaker Jr. Jeffrey Wayne Whitaker Jr. to be exact. You know, I love my name. If anybody have called me, you understand my voicemail. Um, if you don't understand my voicemail, you have heard my voicemail, you understand why. But I just want to come over here, come on here for a quick second and just uh, to say that, hey, I got a podcast coming out, um, Athletes Never Die. And it's going to um, drop on November the 11th. That's a Thursday at 11, 11 a.m. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, something that um, people have been telling me for like the last five, six years that I should get into this space. Uh, to be honest, I um, was very insecure, you know, about, you know, um, just getting on camera. Um, can I really do it? Um, I have done it before, but... Um, you know, even with the brand that I'm wearing right now, the 478 brand is always talking about chasing the fears, and so I'm putting that into action about chasing the free, fear because I believe that on the other side of fear is freedom. And so I have been experienced that, experiencing that freedom uh, from each interview that I'm having and, and, and get to have. And we're still shooting. Um, I appreciate the donations, you know, the private donations that people. Uh, the few people that know what I'm doing. Um, uh, and more to come, we'll have the information where you can be able to donate. But um, I'm just um, drawn to my calling and getting closer to those dreams. And the reason why I title Athletes Never Die is because I want to tap into the subconscious mind to show everybody that, you know, this amazing um, tool, this amazing gift um, of sports um, could be able to put you in places that that other people in different fields that that do not participate in sports just won't get it. And sports teaches you so many things about discipline, about hard work, and those things that you learn from the field or the court, um, you could be able to apply to everyday life. And so that to me means that the athletes the athlete in you will never die. So for the people who just played middle school ball, high school ball, college, or was able to go on to professional ranks, you hear a lot of time that from the world that 2% makes it. And that's true. But you don't hear enough about the 100% of people that benefit from it. So I just want I didn't want to talk your head off. Just wanted to take this moment to say, hey, I got a podcast. Athletes never die. Um, check it out. Let me know what you think. Some people may say, you know, I really don't like it. And then I may say, I really don't care. Um, I really don't. Um, <laughs> I believe that, you know, it's going to help people. And um, and even my insecurities about what people would think and what people would say, I'm saying no to that. And I'm chasing that fear. Um, and realizing that, you know, a lot of times hurt people hurt people. But what I have um, found to realize, that come to realize in this life is that free people, free people. So I just want to express this little freedom that I have of being able to be myself and live out loud. You know? And so check out the podcast and um, stay tuned. We'll have more information coming. God bless. You. Peace out. Bro, yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna roll right on into it, man. Okay, let me get set up. You got now. You gotta get set. I don't want you to get all stiff and everything, man. Basically, it just really um, yeah. uh, rolling into the conversation, you know. So the introduction. So I don't want to be hey and this and five four. And, <laughs> and, yeah, I don't want to be all into that. And I that's the beautiful it. thing about editing, because you had asked me before we started, was it gonna be live? <laughs> and I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Do you know who you are? <laughs> Boy, come on, don't do I'm me like not that. trying to I'm not trying to uh miss out on sponsors. And <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to do none of that, but now man, I, I, I appreciate you for coming down. What you think so far on the on the drive down? Yeah, we in a, we in a different part of Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> this Georgia right here. I see what they say. They say Atlanta different from Georgia. This is yeah. I try to tell anybody once this, you This is a little different than Mississippi too now. Uh, this is a little more country than Mississippi. That's, that's pushing it. Come on. That's that's pushing it. You. That's pushing. I don't been through Mississippi, and I drove the the, the speed limit was forty five. Like, I it's drove a town, 42. though. Like these are okay. like I don't know what this is. It's a, it's a town. It's a downtown. I ain't seen nothing from the daughter. 
<laughs> Ice Tree number Family Dollar, bro. No, probably more like Dollar General. That probably would have been. Yeah, more girl. like Dollar General than than the Family Dollar. Okay. But no, you'll see both of them. You'll see both of them. And um, but no, nah, man. So the drive was good. Yeah. Uh, cause you know had me coming to your house a lot, and cause you live in Stone Mountain. I live out the way. And but yeah, it ain't Stone Mountain. It's it's not cause when I first when you first I'm five minutes from the mountain. No, not at all. I'm, I can I'm driving, take you to the mountain. I'm driving to the mountain. Yeah. Five minutes from the mountain. I'm five minutes from it. No, nah, we never. I never went to the mountain from your house. But I know you 25 minutes from the exit. <laughs> That's a good thing. I guess so. I mean, you see where I'm at. How many minutes I'm away from there? <laughs> oh my God! But you a know, whole forty minutes. What we say, uh, what what the country boys say, that once you pass Tango Outlet, now you're kind of coming into Georgia. Like once you pass Tango Outlet, man, oh, now man. all right, it's not as hype. This is the real. I mean, agriculture is what keeps the city running. So. Yeah. That's what you kind of experience right now. But no, man, I really um, appreciate you for coming. One more thing before you get started. You saw the, uh, there's a school on Netflix? Yeah, about Austin. About Austin. They, yeah. they used to beat y'all? I mean, I wouldn't say we were trading. They, we win, they win. But yeah, Val Austin won 24 state championships. Wow. So they're the winningest high school in the nation. Okay. So yeah. Who went there? Uh, at Auburn, Nicole, uh, uh, Zacoby McClain. McClain? Okay. Yeah, he's a Val Austin guy. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to think. They, they don't have so many too. people. Uh, but you know, down there in um, the lounge, you was, I think he had, had passed the year before, Ed Christian. Yeah, Ed passed when I was there. Yeah, yeah, facts. So, That's yeah, because you just came in at 11 or 12. 11? Golly, why am I thinking I'm so much older? You're not, than bro. You're not. <laughs> So when, when Ed... You really should be in my club. No, not at all. We had the best class, though, because we won the two national champs. But anyway, but with Ed, uh, Ed is from Valdosta. Okay. In his line, but he didn't go to Valdosta High, so he it's Lowndes County. Okay. And it's one of the best players I ever played against in high school from Valdosta, Greg Reed. I don't know if you remember Greg Reed. Reed. He played at Florida State. Yeah, I know that He now. was a return yeah. guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of guy. I think he... Probably got us in trouble at it, but but he was the most dynamic. Like he was a problem. Man. So, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. yeah. I seen one of Robins on there. They beat him too. I think. They beat uh, right off. Um. Did we? I think we ended up. I think we lost that game. Okay. Okay. By like by like a couple of points or so. Okay. But you know, one Robins been to the state championship the last five years. Not trying to brag. <laughs> <laughs> so it's serious. <laughs> Yeah. So they're serious. So they just had a big win. Last, they just put up like 58 last night. Like, so they number one in 5A. Lee County number one in 6A. Mm. And um, and they put up So the country boy really be winning out here. The country what boy. What about like Buford and all them Atlanta schools? So all right, let me explain the difference between um, Buford. Like, so it's a perfect example. So you know at Auburn, you got Owen Pepo mm -hmm. and you got Zacoba McClain. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Owen is at from um, um, Grayson. Okay. So, yeah, I know you know, so he's up at Grayson uh, uh, and Zacoby, but Austin. And so, um, Owen is the, I, I feel like he's a top 20 pick, you know what I'm saying? That type of, you know, he's going to, he's the cap show, you know, I call the cap show the combine. So, he's going he gonna to be able to perform well in the cap show. And then he's a, he's a, a, a great person and he's a hell of a ball player. Yeah. That fits kind of like the Grayson model. Like, oh. I tell Owen all the time, I say, I feel like y'all bust people in, but we ain't gonna say nothing about that. Oh, no, they, no, they recruit. You know, they recruiting up there or whatever. But they, you know, cause it's like a university, you know, they like, like a little small little college. Yeah, I know Grayson that. With Zacoby, Zacoby is from Van Austin. He's, he, yeah, put it to the, to, to the point that the people in Valdosta, like, if he's doing something good in Valdosta, like, they like, oh, you, I, you, they comparing him with such and such. Like, they've been winning state championships since the 60s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, and, 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 and so it, he's more of a country boy. Okay. That country mentality. And you can see how they play. And I, I'm not saying you can see that one, one is the city and one is the country, but you could just, like, for instance, what I mean by that, Owen's going to make the big stop. Yeah. He's going to, you know, do his thing. But Zacoby. Air play. All out. He's going to lead the team in tackles. Yeah. Like, you already know before the season started, 
he's going to lead the team in talent. So if somebody else put on their board like. He just got the right number on <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here we he go. Got that nine he, he got nine. He yeah. showed it. Because he, he, what he was before nine? What was he before nine? What was he before nine? I don't know. Jacoby had, I think it was 35 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Because he had one of the greatest plays in Iron Bowl history with the 100 yard, yeah, you know, and the sets from the time. So yeah. I was at that game. That was at home? That was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. That was bowl, that was bowl freshman year. Bowl junior? Say. Yeah, bowl junior. Ooh. Bowl junior. So, so you got a shot? A shot with what? <laughs> Come out the West. Leagues? Come out winning with the West? Yeah. We just gotta, we gotta see, man. Cause know. that front seven, you know, next week we play at Georgia. That front seven from Georgia, they buy you. Georgia can't score though. We might have a chance. Yeah, so, yeah. But we sure. ain't. But if they putting a ten in the box, we ain't gonna <laughs> run the ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, I, I, I definitely. I hate how weak they got the front of the schedule like that. Ooh. I just hate how that Penn State went. I hate how the Penn State. Went. Because I felt that with some of the with some of the stuff that we missed on, we could have. You, they got a. It's like when we lost a national championship. Um, when we lost a national championship game, um, in thirteen. And it's the the the, 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 the thing that I regret in my whole football career was not speaking at halftime. Cause you know we didn't have a halftime talk. We thought we, we won. went on some plays, <laughs> and everybody came up to here, and then they was like, "Yo, thirty second coach." He was like, "All right, let's go." Word. In a national championship, yeah. right? So because I felt when everybody came in, everybody was like, "It's easy." Yeah, was, like, <laughs> cause we were biting. It was twenty one three, twenty five three, something like that. It was crazy. And and my message is wanted to be more of they don't get a Heisman to anybody. So there's a reason why they're undefeated. There's a reason why they got the Heisman. He won it already? He, he won, I think he won the Heisman that year. Did he have it already, though? Um, yeah, they do it before the Yeah, yeah you have it before yeah. the National Championship. Yeah. So um, I just felt that, that, that something was supposed to be said, and I felt like for that group that was so mature, yeah. we would have snapped back in and, and got back to work. But sometimes you got to understand, because from already winning one, you're like, oh, yeah, we the reason why I didn't say that, cause like, well, we'll lock in. We know how to like put this to. Yeah. But the reality was like, nah, everybody need. And so when I say that with Penn State, I just felt that we um, just gotta understand the the importance of miscue. Like you can't drop a pass, you can't overthrow, you can't miss a tackle, you can't yeah. like, and it happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you got to understand, like, if you're going into an environment, you got to, hey, when we go fourth and one against Kansas State, mm -hmm. we didn't run the ball. We threw the ball for like a 20-yard completion. That ball still looked like it sat up in the air for like two hours. You know, I Duke got Duke got to make that catch. You know, I went there. Yeah, I know. We'll talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> but no, man, listen, it's good to have you. It's good to have my brother. My brother from another mother, Jawan. Stop playing me, bro. I really, I'm, I'd be mad at people messing up my name. Jermaine Whitehead. Main, main. What? Do I supposed to say Whitehead? I'm supposed to say Jermaine? Go ahead, bro. What, bro. what I supposed to say? Start it over. It's Whatever good. you know me, by. Huh? Whatever you know me, by. It's good to have my brother from another mother, Whitehead, is here. You know, my man don't came down or travel down to come see me. I know did it ten times to him, but this is his first time coming down to come see me and um, to kind of talk. So uh, this podcast, this platform is Athlete Never Dies. And what I feel about uh, Athlete Never Dies is it's really to tap into the subconscious mind of that. Whatever you, what, what have you learned from athletics, the things that you have learned from athletics, it'll never leave you mm -hmm. through life. And I wanted to be able to get people on here like yourself to be able to just tell your story. And let's start with the beginning. So where are you from? Man, like you said, my name is uh, Jermaine Whitehead. A lot of people call me Whitehead, you yeah. know that. But uh, I'm from Greenwood, Mississippi, bro. Went to a small 4A high school, Amanda Elsie. Uh, you know, 
just had dreams of going pro one day. Didn't understand college football, didn't understand recruiting, didn't understand none of that. Just knew, you know, I wanted to be a professional athlete. And with so many people telling me that, you know, that's a far dream, a far-fetched dream, you know, I decided, you know, to put it in my will to make sure that, that, that I get an opportunity to do that. And, uh, you know, what came with that was, uh, you know, just fine-tuning the details. You know, every day I understood, you know, the guy before me always blamed, you know, their grades as a reason they didn't get a chance to play, you know, college ball or had to go to JUCO. And I'm like, nah, that not, that's not the route I really want to go. So, you know, I made education a priority. You know, I graduated as a valedictorian of my high school right. ca class simply because, you know, I didn't want coaches to come in and say, oh, he ain't got the grades to go play, you know, on the next level. Uh, you know, took the ACT and all that stuff, yeah. you know, early in my career. And early, just, like, just what is early? Like ninth grade. Just really? scratched all that off. Made a 20 on it uh, my first time, like a 24 the second time. Just scratched those things off my off the list. So when schools came in to recruit me, you know, all that was good. You know, they wanted to know about my character and my play on the field. And, you know, definitely my play on the field spoke for itself. And, you know, I had a lot of good coaches and people around me at the time that, you know, really loved me and saw what I was trying to do. And uh, they just, you know, relished at the opportunity. So tell me this, like, um, for one, that was the first, as long as I've been knowing you, that was the first time, because we always joke and say, uh, you know, Whitehead was a, the top of his class, and he, whatever, boy, see through a book, and he's, <laughs> he's the smartest, he, you're the smartest DB i ever been around, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 but explain Greenwood. Like, explain that whole, because a lot of times when, just being from Georgia, yeah. right, and when I hear Mississippi, and when I hear some of those country parts of Mississippi, it's, it's kind of like that kind of edgy, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's Because it's, it's the, the historic of Mississippi, I mean, Dr. King even said <laughs> Mississippi was like one of the worst places, yeah. you know, even during that, the civil rights movement and things of that nature, and you hear people like yourself, uh, the, uh, some of the artists, uh, David Banner, uh, <laughs> Crick, you That's know, that, that talk about, yo, Mississippi is yeah. different. And you yeah. got the South, and then you got Mississippi. But explain a little bit of, of Greenwood, what Man. you had to go, what, coming up, Grant, growing up in Greenwood, Mississippi, a place that you love, because yeah. we know Greenwood because of you. Right. But explain some of the, um, the um, hurdles that you had to just being um, black. In Mississippi. <laughs> so I mean, you know, that's that's the bottom line for the really kind of the whole Mississippi. It's still that that racial divide, you know. Like where I'm from, I didn't go to school with no white kids. You know, all of them go to Never. private schools in my whole little county and area region. So it's kind of still that divide that's going on to this day. So you know, I, that was a big culture shock when I did go to the next level and went on down the line. You know, just to have them, you know, speak to me, you know, in certain type of ways. So. But we'll talk about that later. But uh, just to be from there, man, uh, small town environment, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, nobody ever really made it out. Everybody, you know, go to go to high school, graduate high school. You know, they end up, you know, at a McDonald's. They end up, you know, working at a Walmart or something like that. They're my and, best type of job. And, and not in a insult at no. all. No, yeah, yeah. Just no, this like, is the normal. This is what goes on. That's the uh, for generations. Yeah, for generations. G generations. Yeah, so you know I mean, and we just were behind on, you know, just having an upsize of, you know, what kids can do outside of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, we all want to go to college, but, you know, my, my mom told me, like, I ain't going to be able to pay for you to go to college. So mm. I kind of understood I'd go to a HBCU, maybe play ball, maybe not, you know, as early, as early on in my life, you know. So, you know, growing up, my role models, you know, they took the street routes and, you know, just found a way to put money in their pocket. They drove the nice cars. You know, that was the only person in my neighborhood that I could relate to that had something going on. Right. You know, I didn't know a lawyer. I didn't know a doctor. I didn't know a professional athlete. I didn't know a person that played at a Division One. You didn't you know, know you didn't major know that. college. I didn't know. Not never one saw person. that. Never saw one Never person. experienced that. Like, so when you was getting recruited, you was the first person. Yeah. Your family, because you know, with recruiting, everything, you know, everybody a part of it. Yeah. So you was the, Coach Coach Malzahn used to always say that everybody in that town loved him. Yeah. And from hearing what you say, like from hearing you explain, like I can, I can see why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah, see that, why. That was the big, that's why people, you know, can that really know me can say I'm so humble. Because, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I never took it for granted. Like 
I always did it so the next person behind me could have a stepping stone, somebody could have a footpath to follow. And man, it just during recruiting, I just you know took it all in. I got recruiting visits from Stanford, from uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, uh, Auburn, of course. Tell me this. For you to have those visits and for you to explain a little bit of your background already, is this the first time you're traveling? Uh, on a plane, for sure. You know, okay. I mean, we took our we took our family trips, but we didn't go far in Memphis. We came to Atlanta a few times. Uh, but, you know, you never get the chance. Like, those kids never really get a chance to get out the state. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Get outside of our comfort zone and really know what's going on with other kids in the world. We thought, you know, everybody lived like us. We, yeah, you know we we ain't know no better at the time. So, coming up in Mississippi, you you if it's racial tension, is and and these are the norms. Yeah, that's these normal. are just how you how you move about. Explain the 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 age that you knew that all right, I gotta um, get a scholarship. Like I I want to make it to the NFL. I got to get a scholarship. Was it just around the same time that your mom was telling you, like, hey, listen, I, I, look, I ain't going to be able to pay for school. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what age is that? Are you? Uh, I'm probably sixth, seventh grade really? at the time. You know, just not so really 12, getting into 13. the football. Because I didn't really play uh, Little League football. We didn't have that growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, when a lot of people into the community like that. But they into it big now. That's a big part of our community, uh, Little League football. But I didn't have that, so. I just, by the time I got to playing football and found out, you know, I had a little something, you know, I, that started to change my mind. Like seven, eight grade, I made a decision. I don't want to be a thug. I don't want to, you know, w- sag my pants. I don't want to wear my hair any kind of way. I mm-hmm. want to present myself in a way that can get me, you know, recruited and seen on the national television. And that was my goal. So who was you, who was you looking to? Um, when you say, I, I didn't see that in Mississippi. Right. So in your mind, what made you when you watched something? I, I was talking to uh, our brother, uh, Jay Jones. Yeah. And Jay had said one particular time he was like, I was four year old. He was four years old. And they told them, like, run down and touch the pole and come back. Mm-hmm. And he was in front of everybody. And while everybody was, you know, when, they, when he saw everybody coming, while they was trying to go and touch the pole, he was okay. already coming back. He was like, well, I, I kind of knew. You know, I was fast. I kind of yeah. knew I had some, you know, to me at four. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was saying the same thing. What what part of that middle school, what happened in middle school that made you go, okay, uh, this could I, be I, a I, little serious. This, I, was I, just, may, I may be all right in this. Yeah, I was just overly athletic, man. And Like, I, I played all sports. I played football, basketball, baseball, yeah. and ran track and was very good at all yeah. of them. I never brag about that. I never tell football, people about that. Baseball. Yeah. Basketball yeah. and ran track. And ran track. And was really good at yeah. all of it. I won state high jump two times, twice. I was about to say you could jump out of jail. I didn't know you was a state high jumper. Why yeah. you never t- said none of this stuff? Because I, I I just, everybody, when we got to college, everybody wanted to, you know, put their accolades on the table and beat their chest. But at the same time. Not I, really I, everybody. It's everybody. a good bit of people. Everybody. Though. I wasn't that type of person. <laughs> I wasn't. But I, wasn't. I, was, I was so worried about, you know, getting to that next goal. I got, by that time, I was so goal-oriented that I never really told people my goals. I just accomplished them, crossed them off my checklist. Like, one of my goals was to play in every game as a freshman. And by the end of the year, I was a starter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I never told nobody else that, but. That's what I was in there living for. That's what I really was in there learning that playbook for. That's why people want to say I'm smart because, you know, that's the way to get on the field as a young young player. So that, that was what I was working for. I always had goals in my mind. I never really put them out there, bro. Really? So, I mean, that is something that you, you could just think of even. Did you have in the, your subconscious or just thinking about, like, well, I don't need to tell too many people? It was it why did you not? Like kind of go. I know you're a humble guy, that, but why did you not like? That uh, come from how I grew up, bro. Yeah. I grew up, you know, in a close, close knit environment, bro. You know, my neighborhood. You know, we close friends. You know, we always stayed ourselves. We go to school, we stand on the freeway, stand on ourselves, and that just was the way I was brought up. You know, keep your mouth closed, watch everything going on. You know, and make your move. You know, when you can. And people will look at you different. You know, after you made that move and yeah. accomplish your goal. If you want somebody to respect you, you gotta. You know, come up with some accomplishments. Yeah, and it's earned. It's not. Yeah, yeah. everything earned. Yeah, everything. Earned. Absolutely. 
So that means before we go into the uh, the recruiting and, and get into college, explain like so like have you just give me one more detail I'll, and, and I'm gonna paint the picture. Mm -hmm. From the upbringing standpoint, it's who at the crib with you? Uh, in my in my mom's house. Yeah. So I grew up in the house with uh my grandma stayed there, my uncle lived there. We in a we in a three bedroom house. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a two bedroom. We turned one of the living room into yeah. a bedroom. Yeah. But uh. I grew up with my mom, my two brothers, my uncle, and my grandma all of stayed in the house together for the majority of my life. I had another uncle stay with me early on, so I was about seven or eight, but he moved uh, to Michigan. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of deep in the, in the little house, but you know, everybody was- And what was the sleeping arrangement? Uh, me and my brother, we, slept, we always slept in the bed together. Until what age? Uh, until about, I was probably eight. And what? he was about, he probably about 14, 15. Okay. And yeah. then we got two twin beds. Uh, and that was, that was, you know, how So y'all shared a room together until yeah. how long? Uh, we shared a room together until he left. And then I shared it with my little brother when he left. He was sleeping with my mom. So, so I always shared a room with So your first brother. time having a room by yourself was college? Uh, yeah, definitely. Really? <laughs> you okay. had my first time thinking about that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think that's something normal. That's everybody in my absolutely. neighborhood grew up like that, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, know. absolutely. no, no better. And then mom is... Mom is hero. Yeah, mom a superhero, man. Yeah. She worked, you know, two jobs, three jobs at a time, bro. You know, was never really at home, and when she was there, she was asleep. So we kind of groomed ourselves, grew ourselves up real fast, you know what I'm saying? My grandma, she cooked on certain days, you know, but she cooking the old school stuff, yeah. green beans, Yeah. you know, leg quarters, she doing it up. But are y'all like chitlins, or this is Mississippi? Are y'all uh, like chitlins and pig feet? And oh, definitely. Oh, <laughs> yeah, most God, definitely, especially yeah. Thanksgiving. We, you, you can find almost <laughs> anything at that table. Yeah, you know, that was one of our biggest holidays growing up. That was that's a big, big reason on family oriented too. But you know, uh, you know, I, my auntie she was down the street. She had two kids in her house. Uh, one of my uncles stayed with her as well. But you know, we all just kind of grew up right near each other, bro. And you yeah. know, that was all I had for a long time. Absolutely. Everybody in my neighborhood. So, <clears throat> so when it came to sports, who's the male figure? Like, was it, did sports provide male figures or you had male figures from your uncle or your brother? Like, who was the, the, the male figure that you go, all right, this is a pathway yeah. and I can kind of get behind this pathway? Yeah, so when I'm sixth and seventh grade, bro, the, the guys in my neighborhood, you know, I can, you know, name two off the bat that, you know, just really turned me on to being that guy, like, Okay. You want to be that, you want to be looked at as the man, a big dog. And, yeah. You know, what they were carrying around as far as money, as far as, you know, the girls that end up liking them, the cars that they were driving. And I re I love what they were doing on the football field. And, you know, most of them play all sports as well. So okay. I just looked at how popular that made them. You know, that was one of the reasons that I looked up to them, man. You know, they gave me a lot of advice on, you know, how to handle the girl, how to handle the uh, attention, how to, you know, how to be a man, how to say no, you mm -hmm. know, how to make your own decision. You know, how old are they? So they probably was five, six years older than me. Okay. Bro. I ain't never get to play high school with them, but sooner they left, I was going into high school. You know, they were the, they were the guys in my neighborhood who I shook their hand every day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We rode the bus together until they started driving. They were like, they jumped with my Come big pick dog. you up. Yeah. 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 I drove their car to prom, all that type of stuff. Okay, yeah. I got you. So the, the, the who was the out of these two who was the fashion because Whitehead is a fashion statement. I, both I used of them, to always bro, both of them. That, I, that's a that's, that was a thing to be a trendsetter in my neighborhood. I used like, to always say in school. Yeah. That Whitehead was the dude that if we had to go to the event and be there for 15 minutes, he was gonna overdress every occasion. Yeah. <laughs> but I realized sure like you know what I'm saying because even when you pledge. I realized that, you know, um, the, like that though, that's your way of life. That's how you is. That's that's how, when you step out, you gon' even when we went to Ryan wedding, it was just like, all right, we know head. <laughs> it's like you just gotta have weird. a separate conversation because somebody is definitely <laughs> gonna come in here. And you don't dress like you uh shot that JoJo Fashions. You know oh, what I'm saying? You don't yeah. dress with, you know, uh -uh. with just some loud colors and, and, and crazy because that's Mm -mm. That's a perception that some people would think Mississippi would go brain. Mm -mm. But these 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 guys, your big bros, they yeah. was the one that from um your your fashion. Yeah, selection. for sure. For sure. I mean that was the thing, you know, to be the best dressed guy, be the cool guy. You know, my, my older brother who, you know, he ain't played football, he played basketball and stuff like that, but he was 
like sharp. Like you, the yeah. first guy I seen, we you know back when we was rocking chaps and as the country folks say, when, cast it short. Yeah, when, <laughs> when Polo first came out, this the guy I seen rocking that tummy hill figure. He had all that on, so you know I, I definitely had hand me downs to put on at the time. So I used to go to school with his Jabos on, you know, hold your bow fit, oh. Jordan. Everybody looking at me like, where you get that from? Where yeah. you get that? You know, I got it's like my big brother Clark, yeah. you know, and I dress it up and make it look like you know some of mine. And man, that just was a that just was a, a way of life for me. Did you grow up and outshine the rest? Could you say you're the best dressed right now? I'm definitely the best dressed. <laughs> I'm definitely the best dressed. They so, know that. <laughs> so the student became the teacher. Man, definitely. All definitely. right. So we going to Auburn. So we decide to go to Auburn, but you from Mississippi. Right. And from somebody from Greenwood, Mississippi, and the biggest attraction that came out of this city, you go to old Mrs. Mississippi State. Yeah. That's what you that's what you just that's what you do. Yeah, so my people were big Mississippi State fans, bro. Okay. Uh, you know, that's that's the one school that they like. But I, I never, like I said, I never really watched college football on Saturdays. Like, I didn't know. Okay. You know, I knew about their school and stuff like that, but I didn't know too much about, you know, the football programs across the SEC. I just wanted to go to the NFL. I was yeah. trying to skip all of that. But when I did get a chance to, you know, get around and find out about recruiting and all that stuff, Auburn, I chose because I wanted a chance to win a national championship, bro. And, mm. You know, I, I feel like they had a great program just from being there, watching their roster yeah. and, and just put it together. The coach was a great coaching staff at the time. And uh, I just wanted to come in and knew I could play early on a team that had a chance to win the championship. And who was your recruiter calling in? Uh, Gus? Gus recruited yeah. me heavy. Uh, he, Gus wanted me to play He always offense. talking about this offense thing, and I never believed him, right? So Coach Mazan always said that, you know, you know, Jermaine could have been a good offense. And I and I would just, I swear I would just, like, ignore Why? the conversation. Why? Because I just, only thing, I know you from the defensive side of the ball. And I know uh, you can bro. jump out the gym. Yeah. I'm just realizing that you uh, want, you was in, you know, state, you want two, two-time two high jumper. Yeah. Uh, what about baseball? No records there? Uh, I mean, our MVPs. And, you so know, you got a bunch went, of trophies at the whole, crib. I don't win baseball season without striking out. I just, I was like the truth. So, so now y'all went playing. Yeah, we no, the, now the, in baseball you play everybody. Yeah, we yeah. play against the white team. We play yeah. against those schools. We play okay. against the Clevelands and the uh, I can't think of the other school. We play against the white schools. Yeah, and, you know they they beat us, but okay. you know, they know I played though. Bingo, but and and in basketball, you was averaging how much? Uh, I probably average about twelve points. I, I use basketball to kind of get the team going, but I want to I want an MVP in basketball too in my district. Okay. Uh, you know, I almost took it to state. Then two years, I mean, the year after I left, they won state two times in a row. So I mean, I just I kind of helped build that program. So I mean, I I, I was the truth, bro. So back to <laughs> this offensive. Yeah. What, what so position in, you were gonna play? So in, 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 in high school, bro, I played everything: quarterback, yeah. receiver, running so back. Best I, athlete you gonna? Best athlete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different. So you know, Gus seen me catch a screen, make five people miss, and take it to the house. And take it to the house. Gus seen me catch a kickoff return. Everybody looked like they tackled me, and I come out the pile. And you wasn't a return man at Auburn. Cause I, I, I you had a pick six your freshman year. Definitely. Yeah, it, was that the only time you scored? No, I had two pick sixes. Oh, what, 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 what was the My other senior year against, senior uh, against Arkansas? First okay. game of the year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that was we a, needed that one. That was a rough year. <laughs> we needed that one. <laughs> so, you, you, you could have been an offense. You would have been a receiver. Uh, definitely, I would have would have wanted to be a receiver. Get me the ball quick. I catch the deep ball and stuff like that. But yeah, I had the quickness and stuff to make people miss. Yeah. So Coach Malzahn is not just blowing smoke when no. he goes. He thought he thought when I signed, I was coming to play offense. Oh really? He thought when I signed. So yeah. you get to Auburn, and you you rocking number thirty five. Mm hmm. Thirty two. Thirty two. Thirty two. Yeah. And um. How did you end up on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, your head coach is a defensive-minded guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, coach you Chizzy. know, me and Chiz always kind of had that conversation. You know, he told me about the Jim Thorpe Award when he coached and stuff like that. That was a big part yeah. of the recruit, too. Carlos? Uh, Carlos yeah. you know, Rogers yeah. was one. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely had in my mindset, I, I always knew I wanted to play defense because I didn't want, you know, to feel like I needed the ball in my hands. I didn't want to get, you know, belligerent about having the ball. Yeah. Because in high school, I kind of had those instances where, you know, give me the, <laughs> give me the ball. <laughs> and some, get a, I was like, boogie. <laughs> okay, you have to, oh, <laughs> you okay. You got to put me in. <laughs> you know what uh, I mean? Uh, you know, I took over a lot of games in high school, though, bro. And, and I think that's what they saw in my film and, and from hearing from coaches and referees and stuff like that. Okay. 
So freshman year, you're starting by the end of your freshman year. Um, sophomore year is the worst year. Is that 2012? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sophomore year is the worst year that Auburn ever had. Auburn, what is this, 1856? Oh, man. And that's the worst year that Auburn has ever had. Um, and um, your starter, yeah, um, of course. And then your junior year, uh, coach, coach, there's a new, there's a new switch. Mm -hmm. Coach Malzahn comes back. Uh, w one day I'm gonna do a round table and we can kind of talk about that transition. But, okay. um, but Coach Malzahn uh, comes back and um, and we go to the national championship. Yeah. So. And that's the, uh, everybody know you're doing the famous little dance before Chris uh, becomes a, 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 a Auburn legend forever. You, my brother. Um, but tell me, until, from your freshman year to your junior year, the type of, what is the, 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 the talk about Jermaine Whitehead? What, everybody's saying he's smart. Everybody's saying he's a great football player. Everybody's saying he got a chance. Yeah. Just... Man, from I was so quiet, bro, and Facts. you know I was just a, a brother to everybody that you know, and everybody saw that. And you know, I, like my senior, year, I kind of made it about myself. But you know, up until my junior, year, I just was a, a piece of the puzzle and just wanted to help some, help the next man, help the next guy. Uh, you know, I was in class. I knew I wanted to graduate early. You know, I wanted to leave with my degree because I didn't want to have to go back and get it. You know, I was doing that for my mom. Uh, so that little stuff like that was what people really knew about me up until that point. You know, the thing about it, one thing I, this is why I realized you was from Mississippi. You had a deep fry. Oh, yeah. Mandatory. <laughs> you had a deep fry. And no, I got them chicken wings. In the dorm. Yeah. First of all, I don't think you're supposed to have a deep fry in the dorm. Really? I, no, I don't think, I mean, you had like the, <laughs> like what I saw in the country where people, you know, fry fish and you know? all. You had that in the kitchen of the door, and I'm like, yo. Yeah, shout out to my roommate, Lat, man. We <laughs> ate, we ate. That's the only thing I could cook at the time. I was a chicken wing guy. Everybody knows me. And I yeah. caught on to it late. Yeah, man, it was like, yeah, you go by Whitehead Room. I'm like, what? Chicken wings for you. And, and, and you had a deep fry in the dorm, and I just thought the RA was definitely going to report, you know. So shout out to the RA. I shout think it was uh, Dale. Was yeah, it Dale? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to Dale, man. <laughs> Dale didn't snitch. He looked you know? out. So he, he, for real. I, Put it like this, I'll, the reason why Dale didn't snitch is because Dale was probably eating some of them wings, too. <laughs> he came and got a few. Absolutely. I fed, I fed a lot of people with that chicken, me and that, man, yeah. Your freshman to junior year was just like a, a, the storybook of then going to the national championship, uh, um, just missing out on the national, but we SEC champs, we SEC West champs, yeah. all this and going, and it's setting up a historic <laughs> senior season right and in life and in sports we all go through adversity adversity and you hit the wall the, the uh, 2014 your senior year yeah. kind of explain what happened uh, man like i say i i really put myself first in a mm -hmm. lot of situations i mean you know i was still a team guy but you know in situations you know that everybody knew i was smart everybody knew i could get the whole team lined up and put us in the right plays and the right calls and you know everybody come off and pat my back for doing such things yeah so you know and deciding my senior year you know i want to make myself a marketable player for the nfl draft yeah and uh you know like i said the first game it, it worked the first two games it worked out for me i came up with an interception the first one was an interception for a touchdown return yeah. And, was uh, that first half or second half? Uh, that was in the second half. We yeah, were down yeah, in the first we, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we tied it by, by half time. I mean, it, was, I mean, it, 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 it was, felt that way, though. It was too it, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was way too close. Way yeah. too close. But uh, I, I ended up, you know, making that play to kind of change that game, and we ended up catapulting and winning out in the second right. game. We played San Jose State uh, and uh, have another interception in that game. So, But it came from me, you know, making my own decisions on the field, kind of changing some stuff that, you know, Call them different play, call yeah, different. Yeah, we might board, come down board. from the right, and I come down left instead of right because I know where the ball going. Yeah. You know, three by one formation. Instead of coming away from the right, I come from the left. Stuff like that. Just from me watching film and me being a player coach as well. And uh, you know, I had some coaches that they were good dudes, bro. And they just you know wanted to know why I was making that decision and wanted to know why I kind of got so selfish. And I told him, you know, my goal was to win the Thorpe Award. You know, I had two picks in two games, ended the season with six picks in six games. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, I definitely could have broke records, you know, that yeah. year. 
But, uh, you know, we had that little altercation and uh, words got it changed in front of a team sitting, bro. And they did, they just didn't like that I had a, that mentality to yeah. be able to say something back, you know. But like I said, my senior year and I was going to kind of do things in a way I felt like let me to make plays. Do you feel like that was selfish or do you feel like that was – uh, t you've been a team player, but also being very outspoken. Like, hey, I, I kind of, on my hand, my, I, I, I heard people um, that get in the football element and go like, all right, I get to a place that when I start, that when the game starts slowing down, that you can't even mess with me out here in this place. That's what it was. You know, yeah. That's exactly, so, like, I had been out there so long as a starter that, yeah. you know, I kind of start understanding that, you know, I was the best player on the field. And, and I let could me change go. the game at any moment, you know what I'm saying? And that started to happen in those first two games. And, you know, we'll be in there watching films. I say, Coach, why we why we don't do it this way? Could I do it this way? In the game, I might do it like this. Yeah. And I just started, instead of asking, I just started doing, doing it. it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was making the plays. And, you know, they just didn't like that I was doing my own thing out there. Because and the reason why I, I wanted to paint the picture when I was talking to you earlier is because the I used to have – um, you know, some people used to say well, when we played ball together, if you go to Jeff, yeah. he's going to probably be the one that could be able to talk to anybody, <laughs> whatever coach or whatever. Yeah. Because, well, some of my, um, is, I used to try to explain it to certain guys, coaches, because, you know, we Southern. It's that yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am mentality. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. That, that, that. That thing would get you indoors that yeah. that money can get you in, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as far as respectful. But I used to always say sometimes with some guys that we played, because we had an edgy group, you yeah. know, pretty much our whole career at Auburn. And what I used to say to defend some of these guys, I'm like, if I've been a man of my house since I was six, right? Yeah. And when I talk to my older brother, it's man to man. Yeah. And I was eight and he was 14. Literally. And when I talk to grandmama, we making decisions about, bills and things that and mama well, i'm making decisions do i work here and do when you put me in that setting i'm not a boy yeah. i'm not a kid right <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in the same setting like of having a conversation yeah. and i think a lot of times um not only in this situation but i feel like in other situations just overall not with you just in being around ball as long as i have yeah. you um is a disconnect it's a, that's a, that's a disconnect with, with, with in ball sometimes because yeah. in football especially, most of the guys that's holding on the ball come from environments that they had to be, yeah. they had to grow up fast. Yeah. And when you come from those environments to grow up fast, it's an amazing story and it's something it's a tearjerker and things of that nature. But at the same time, the flip side of that, you can't come at me, mm -hmm. you can't come down here and sit down at me, and you may you may have a a son who's nineteen or twenty. And you may talk to him that way. But if I if the man in my house <laughs> right. has been me the whole time. You gotta have that conversation. And I felt that even um because you, you end up getting suspended. Yeah. And you got suspended from the from the um uh, how many games you missed? Uh, I missed six games, bro. You missed six games. And the reason why you said you saw the accolades going that year, because and this is why I hate about that year. Because everybody in 13, the older guys yeah. uh, th that I was going to graduate with until I got injured, yeah. everybody said, well, you can't say the 14 team was better than the 13 <laughs> team because 13 team, I'm like, yo, by week nine, we were still number three in the country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A fumble in A&M changed the whole momentum of the season. Yeah. We still put up 44 against Bama yeah. and lost. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I still can't get how we let Blake Sims put up 55 points. I just, I still can't get that. But. That ball's everywhere. Yeah, oh, man. But the thing is, help me paint this picture of your upbringing that led to how you interact with older, older, older men. So, man, me not just having my dad in my life, bro, was a, was a big hurdle, you know, in my life. Like, right. my dad, no offense to him, bro, he showed up. You know, at 17, 18. And you're already you know, stuck in your right age. Yeah, you're already, you, I'm, you, I mean, I, and he showed yeah. up. So this is the conversation. So I got a teacher at school <laughs> and know my dad real good. My teacher owned the club. My dad go to the club all the time. So my teacher asked me one day in class, who your pop? 
just, you know, casual conversation. He don't know. I tell him my dad's name. He like, man, I hang with him every day. So, you know what I'm saying, he kind of hooked it up to where me and my dad could meet, get acquainted or whatever, and he kind of started coming back around then. But by this time, you know, I'm getting recruited. I'm in the paper every mm. week. I'm already who I really am. You know, I got my people I look up to. I understand what I understand. I know what I know, you know, as far as being a man and, you know, how to answer questions and how to, you know, demand respect. And your biological father can't come at you. Yeah. He got to come at you a certain way. Yeah, he got to come at me a certain yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he kind of saw the guys I would hang around and wanted me to change my crowd. And I'm like, nah, Pops, I probably, uh, you know, stop talking to you before I stop hanging with, you know, some of the people I hang with. Because they all I got, bro. They've been there since I was a little kid. Did you feel a, take offense that he was trying to come and, and, and make some, make suggestions? Because I don't talk to different people. I, bro, I, I, that, I, 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 played it, I played it with two hands, bro. Yeah. Like, on one hand, you happy. I believe in the Bible, bro. Like, oh, wow. you know, honor your mother, honor your father, give him a second chance. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I can't, I can't let that stop what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? I can't mm -hmm. let that be the reason I don't make it. Because that's motivated me so long, not having my dad in the house, bro, wanting to put flat screen TVs in my house. I did that at 18 years old, my first Pell Grant. I put flat screens in every room in my house. Like, right. that made my mama cry. Like, that's something yeah. she always wanted. You know, just mm. little stuff like that kind of gave me my motivation to keep going and, okay, now you want to buy your mama a house. Now you want to buy your mama a car. Now you want to be able to do these things that, you know, I, like, I, like right now I don't have a girlfriend because I tend to my mama business so much. Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make her the woman I, she want to be. She can have whatever she want to have in that Absolutely. world. Definitely. And so when y'all meet, y'all talk the whole nine. How was his relationship when you was in college? Uh, did it fall back off? Yeah, it was, it was here and there, bro. I mean, how many games? Uh, did, like coming, yeah, coming nah, to see you playing college. Came, he came. To, he didn't come to no game. Matter of fact, he came mm -hmm. to uh, my graduation. You know, I what? graduated right before my senior year. Mm -hmm. uh, so he came to that, and you know that was. You know, big to kind of see him around the coaches and stuff like that, and he was happy. You know, I, I ain't got no problem with it, bro. But I had I, I was already a man at that time. So fast forward, you 21 now. Yeah. What, what, how old are you? 14, 21, 22. Yeah, 21. 21. Yeah. And getting challenged, you you feel like with the coach, you get you get suspended for six games, yeah. right? You get suspended for six games, and that now. Everything everybody been hearing about Jermaine Whitehead, Jermaine Whitehead, great, 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 great. And all the gray area. It's a huge gray area. Yeah. And this at the wrong, the worst time, because now people come and ask some more questions, because they for the call. They gonna that like they for the people for the draft you. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And so what did you how did you feel that if you could I just felt like bro the the humble me wasn't getting the job done. The 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 me that led to you know, us going three and nine wasn't getting the job done. Me being a yes man wasn't getting the job done. Like, yeah. I said at times, coaches will tell you I demanded more of them than they demanded of themselves. Like we'll go in meeting room and the coaches will, will be like, you know, we'll we'll look over a couple of plays and he'll laugh the rest of the players. I, I tell him, nah, coach, we're going through every play. I need to know how I can get better. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I wanna go to the next level. I wanna win the next game. Right. That was my mentality that year. And, uh, you know, I just had played so much ball that being mediocre wasn't an option no more, man. Because you didn't live like that. I, yeah. I always say it's two types of people. It's, it's a person who lives on the field and there's a person who's playing. Yeah. On the, and it's not, now, you could go, you know, been on the, in the league and that's what we feel to go to. Yeah. But you could go to the league and all that. But I'm just saying that person, the teams, when there's a lot of living going on out on the field, those yeah. are the, the special, those are the dynasty. Those are, we made this run. I don't care from high school, college. Yeah. Or professional um, and, and by that you mean like them people that got a real reason to be out reason. there you know what i'm saying it ain't about uh girls it ain't about pictures it ain't about accolades it's about that one fight that i get to win right you know what i mean i get to really mm -hmm. go out here and be dominant as i can be and you know that was my goal so suspend it you missed the remainder of the six games or you come back at the end of the year uh, you come back for the bowl game? Yeah, I came back. You know, without, so I played two games, the missed six, so I came back game nine. Okay, came back game nine, and doing that punishment, they had you. You was, you know, what? Man, so I never really spoke about it, bro. But you know, I I, I took a lot in that punishment. You know what I mean? You know, it was either get kicked off the team or go through whatever they right. put against me, and I wasn't afraid of controversy. I wasn't afraid of 
having to prove myself because I know who I was. I knew I'm, I'm still the same humble dude. I'm still, you know, Jermaine Whitehead that yeah. everybody love and know. So, uh, yeah, so they moved me out the dorm. They moved me over to some jail cell of a dorm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to live with some common, common roommate. Me and him made good friends, bro. And, yeah. you know, every morning I had to get up and go to the equestrian field and shovel shit. Uh, did that for hours, bro. I cleaned up a barn. Uh, I, I just, you know, lived a different life. They had me going to different meetings every morning to, you know, kind of detect what type of character I had. And uh, even in the manhood meetings, he would tell me, like, you a great guy. You just, you just edgy. You just got an edge to you, bro. And, and you know, that's, that's all I could really say about that situation. But, yeah, I went through, I went through a lot to get back, you know, on that field. What would you say... Um, because I'm hearing this, a lot of this is, we know how these conversations, right? Yeah. And we had the conversations during them moments, you feel what I'm saying? Um, and being an advocate for you, being frustrated in, in the moment, because you, I go in and, and <laughs> fight for you. And, uh, and, yeah. uh, and it probably a day that it was a, a heat of this change. And, and I'm like, yo, hey, you, and one thing I will always give you credit. You always say before, hey, before you start, I just want to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> this was the situation, yeah. and you go in with whatever you want to say. But I'm just yeah. saying, like, I, cause I felt like you got to a point in life that you was like, I think everybody had that that place in life when you just like, no, yeah. that's all it was. Like, yeah. I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Literally. Yeah, and and, and so go through that. You come back. You finish off the year. And from everything that you know been through, you ready to go ahead and, hey, yeah. man, I appreciate you all. Man. <laughs> Let me get up out of here. Yeah. And, and how, would the, how did the draft go? How did, how did, um, um, how did that go? Did, and what, what, did you get drafted? No, I didn't get drafted. I mean, you know, they, they definitely spoke negatively of me and, uh, you know, killed my dream of wanting to have my name called one day, man. And that what kind of led up to more controversy in right. my life. So the story of my life, you know, being able to kind of let let one thing go so it don't catapult into something else. That's right. that's the reflection I got today looking back on all of that. But uh, yeah, I finished that season, bro, real strong. Almost had an interception in every every game I played in. Yeah. Uh, bowl game I had two, and my film, you know, the film spoke for itself, bro. It, and when I did, you know, get into the NFL, a lot of people told me I ain't get drafted because of that situation. So you saying people didn't stand on the table for you? No. People spoke bad on your name yeah. right because now this you never been an issue yeah. before this year never before never been an issue my before first this incident, year. Huh? first incident <laughs> you're the worst p person ever people don't stand on the table for you you go undrafted right mm -hmm. and when i say people don't stand on the table explain from a perspective that people don't understand the. that's when we start getting into the political yeah. aspect of it so what? man it's kind of like when you when you go to a school like I'm your son like you want the best for me mm -hmm. the best for me lead to you getting more players and yeah, right, right, other right. opportunities with other kids mm -hmm. so you know they just they just wouldn't get that get that 100 percent you know word that I was a good guy and that that was an incident that we just had to go through and fix and they is not everybody or they is they is is it everybody or they are just I'm like leave, I'm leaving people. everything. Uh, you gonna leave, leave it out? Yeah, there. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. Everybody <laughs> that can watch didn't know exactly who you know. I'm talking <laughs> who they about, are? But, you <laughs> who know. they are? Yeah. yeah for real. But but you no, know, I'm just saying because one thing about the platform is you tell your truth. You control the narrative. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, so you in the league. Uh, uh, you get undrafted. Who pick you up? What's your first call? Uh, San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers pick you up. Yeah. Right. And explain the because you had a you had uh explain the you was with the 49ers for how long? A uh, year. A year. Next year. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, and then I switched to Green Bay. Green Bay. You was in Green Bay. Three years. Three years. Yeah. I came and saw you. Uh, uh, we didn't get a chance to see each other after, but I was at the. Um, Y'all was playing the Falcons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I had posted a pic it, with a message mm -hmm. about the, you know, with my career, injury prone, not being able to fight for a right, you right. know what I'm saying, to, 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 to be on the field and um, as far as and then going to achieving my dreams as far as professional. But mm -hmm. 
when I saw you, I remember going like, I did make it. You did. You know what I'm saying? Because, not because of the late night conversations and all this, like big bro, little bro, we both, no matter the age, we both switched those roles. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But it was this mindset that, you know, I know, like I know this person. You, it's people that you, teammates that you play ball with, and you didn't really see after the complex, you know, from time to time. <laughs> Man. But like, no, I right. know this guy. Every I, day. I know when I need to check in on him. I know, you know, X, Y, Z, and I, and I, it was liberated. I, I was liberated in that moment of realizing, and it was, it was, it was an emotional moment for me. In the box, I was in the box. And I couldn't really, you know, I had to kind of go off a little bit, you know, um, and go off to, to 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 another room. But because I felt like, you know, like this is somebody that I really respect, I got never love for, and then this individual, he's out there, like he's out there playing in the NFL. So yeah. you do a, a a year with San Fran, in between with Baltimore, you do three with Green Bay, and Cleveland called. Yeah, I do two with Cleveland. And you do two with Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So by this time, you this with you're five, you're six. Mm -hmm, you're six. You're six. By this time, everything that don't happen from college, right, is wiped. They like, hey, right, this is why you didn't get drafted. People being honest with you, hey, yo, hey, you didn't get drafted because yeah. this is what was said. And they let you know verbatim. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is what was said about you. This is why people didn't, but hey, we kind of got a steal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got to steal from having somebody like you. Next thing you know, um, and you're playing ball, and Cleveland comes, and, and when you're at Green Bay, you started some, right? Yeah, I played in a lot of <laughs> roles out there, man. Started a few games. Yeah, yeah. a lot of roles, huge. Um, uh, uh, started a few games. You go to Cleveland, now this is this is the revamp of, uh, this one is for to get serious. Yeah. Like, this is not only that you're starting, like, you're coming to your own. you making your plays, you really, you, you come into your own man. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? And um, so how can I say this part? <laughs> uh, two two weeks before, the okay. cra it went crazy. Yeah. Um, Y'all come in to Boston mm -hmm. uh, and play the Patriots. Well, no, well, Foxborough, because I used to always thought the Patriots in Boston until mm -hmm. I start. You come in to Foxborough, y'all win, right? No, you uh, lost. No, Y'all lost. Yeah. You lost. Cause, cause Jay made the greatest play, one of the great hustle plays I ever seen. Drones. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, so y'all come into um, uh, Foxborough, hard fought game. You lose, right? The day before, we meet. We meet at the hotel, yeah. and I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see my dog. My dog got a look on his face. You feel what I'm saying? Just from just. Just life, and you know we always go have those heart to hearts. But yeah. that moment, I went in the heart to heart stage. I was yeah. just, a, I'm right. happy. Yeah. We, I'm, I get to see my guy. I'm, 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 um, stand at one of my, out, you know, stand with Jones because I'm coming up to see the game. You know what I'm saying? I will probably been up there helping him out with something. Yeah. So I stand with my dog. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna come by because Jones was like, yeah, I'm gonna come by, and I'm like, nah, I'm gonna go see Whitehead. He's like, all right, bet. Well, I ain't coming back. <laughs> well, I just see you after the game. I'm yeah. like, all right. So I go see you. Your spirit. I maybe even test you later. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I kind of felt two weeks later. Viral. <laughs> <laughs> two two weeks later, the definition of a viral moment happened. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You um, get on Twitter. You ha you have there was a it was a it, it was a game. Mm -hmm. You didn't perform well mm -mm. at all. Mm -mm. With with great reasons. No. Not with not with no great nah. reasons. Not with the, you're not you're not going you're not blaming it on nah. broke hand none nah. of that. Not all right. So you just you 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 play bad. Play bad. Yeah. You, you didn't perform well at all. You had to be the first one in the locker room. Definitely. <laughs> Very first one. You had to be the first one in the locker room. And I get, it ain't my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, Ooh. I get a bunch of calls and text messages going, what is wrong with Whitehead? Why they telling me to you? <laughs> what is going on with Whitehead? So 
I'm like, read. I'm like, tell me what was said. I'm like, you know, people got fake accounts. They telling me kind of some stuff, what was going on. I'm like, nah, whitehead. And, and they read it verbatim. Yeah. <laughs> and when they read it verbatim, only thing I was hearing was Greenwood, Mississippi. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, def- definitely whitehead. I called you probably about 16 times. Uh, and I think I, I sent you a message. And I said, I'm not going to stop calling <laughs> until you pick up the phone. And you picked up the next time. And you was like, what? <laughs> and I said, no, I, I want all the smoke. It's, it's like, this is what you should have did. <laughs> In the first place. This is what you should have did the first time. So yeah. explain that, that what happened. There was a tweet. There was a reporter came at you. Man, from so, your perspective. So a lot of people don't know, bro. Like, the, during the time I was in the league and really got to playing, bro, like, I was a guy that was always on the edge. They really wanted to cut me, but they couldn't cut me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. By the time the season got around, I was one of the most important players on the team. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Joe Witt was, was my coach probably a little bit of the time, and he could attest to it that, you know, they he, my position coach and my defensive coordinator, they love me. So, you know, and but the head coach, you know, he kind of was wondering why I was still around and how I was still around and, you know, kind of gave me side talk and side eye. And, you know, I just I wanted to be a team guy, bro. I wanted to be like, man. I just wanted to be, you know, another guy in the locker room. But you, with respect, like we just talked yeah. about earlier, is so much more important. It's way more important that you to me. Couldn't to me, bro. You so, could never fold on that. Yeah, I yeah, could. You got so, to that point that you couldn't fold on that. Yeah, so, you know, anyway, going into that game, so the week before that game, we're going into uh, Baltimore, one of the best career games I have in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But before that game, uh, we had some guy hurt, that I, and I ended up starting. That was one of my first games starting, and he told me. Uh, For Cleveland. Yeah, he right. told my, he told, he said, uh, we out there, we out there almost won a game we playing against the Rams. He said, we almost won a game against the Rams with guys that shouldn't even be in the league. And that kind of hurt my feeling, bro. Like, yeah. you know, like, you know, I'm a man. True enough, I should have just wiped that to the side. But, you know, that made me look at him different. And it only brought me all the way back to my upbringing that, you know, they, they just look at us different. The ones that really from them environment, talk like that, walk like that, move like that. They just, they gonna treat you different, bro. If I would've been a drafted player, he wouldn't have said that. Right. You know what I'm saying? He just was trying to find a way to get under my skin. And you know, I let it get there, bro. So the next game, I go out there and have a great week or whatever. And now he, you know, come back one of my best friends. Right. And you know me, I cold shoulder that, bro. And you know, I'm a man, respect everything to me. So I, I kind of maneuver on to the next game and we playing against Denver, bro, I go out there and then I have a bad game. Uh, by this time, I had to broke my hand. Uh, I, I'm playing with a bad hamstring. We got a few guys down on defense and they telling me I can't sit out. I can't not play. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just in my emotion so fast. And the reason I got to my phone so quick after that game, bro, I couldn't take my shoulder pads off. My, my hand broke, it's cast up. So I had to have people help me get it on. And like mm-hmm. you said, I was the first person in the locker room. And so I'm just sitting there looking at my phone for at least 10 minutes. Uh, just people just belligerently just who you are as a person, like not a football player. Like, you know, he a scumbag and he, this nigga need to go do this. And like, he need to be like, so I just kind of start replying and to the point that what I said, I didn't mean, but I definitely wanted to hurt your feeling the way you were, you know, hurt mine. Yeah. That just was the way I got my, was able to get my words all that time. and. You know, it's, it's so many other alternatives I should have took. You know what I'm saying? A hot shower, anything. I could have showered with my pads on. But like right. I said, I couldn't even take them off. So, you know, that just was how fast that came out. And, you know, me, bro, when it come out, I, yeah, I out. stick by whatever. You yeah, know, and you going to stand on it. Yeah. And, and, you know? and, but a part of the tweet, it was so in your face. So as people de- de- define it, so violent, <laughs> so in your face. And it had a racial tension attached to it. Yeah. And that's the reason. But that, was, that wasn't just to him. That was, no, to, that yeah. was to everyone that didn't did me like that. That yeah, you, treated that, me. That, that's in back that in manner. Greenwood. Yeah. Like, you, you, like, that's everything that just coming in one, one, one time that yeah. a lot of times and you, you probably should have said something you didn't, that no kind of um, balled all up. You had a balled all up and you just expressed yourself 
Yeah. And, and how I mean, many characters that you can express really through, did. through Twitter. Yeah, and it, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the violent part wasn't even meant to be violent. It was right. just about, man, you would get on a social network and say that type of stuff, but you wouldn't be two feet from me and mumble that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you would look at me and ask me for an autograph instead of saying what you got on your heart. So that's just really why I kind of took it in that route because, you know, we, we taught that, you know, to, to get your problem out, you know, at the end of the day, you either fight about it and go on about your business. Yeah, and, and what you mean by talk, talking that, being taught that, right, taught that, is you, this is where you come from, yeah. right? You come from an environment, yeah. um, it's an emotional environment. The hood is very emotional, yeah. right? And the environment that we come from. And then when you're on top of that, when the, your mom is your hero, your mom is the person who's laying the foundation, right? Yeah. And you cry. And no matter if you're around, I had a brother who was six years older than me, but my mom, she was the, yeah. she's working, you know, multiple jobs and she's keeping the lights on. And then he later helped and, and, and all that. But growing up and being around women, a, a woman, you know, and like you said, your grandma in the house. So it's women is, is leading, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Emotions come with that. Yeah, like yeah. unconsciously, that's what you learn. That's what you know. And so when you get to when I'm angry, I come from a spot that we fight. I come from a household that is she's an emotional creature. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? She turn it on and off. Turn it on and off. <laughs> and you know, been said something. And now you like, hey, what's up, man? Everybody like, yo, I remember what you just said to me, man. Really? You feel what I'm saying? Really. And um, do you? What do you feel like? All right. Since you have left ball and mm -hmm. you haven't been back in the nah. league since that moment, because nah. I knew when I heard it <laughs> that when they read it to me, I said, "Well, that's head," and I said, "Well, he's definitely off the team." Like I know they definitely. <laughs> this is a hundred percent they're gonna cut him. Yeah. And I'm like, well, he'll probably have another shot, but I didn't realize like, because you gotta think about it, and a lot of times in profession and coaching, in any type of profession. Um, that is very tight. It's a lot. Of, it's a tight net clicking yeah. and grouping. Yeah. And if you you don't know that could be his best friend over here and things yeah. and, and word get shot around and then 2014 is pulled back up. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, did we ignore things that people said six years ago? You feel what I'm saying? So how have you been since ball uh, since that incident? Have you got over that incident? Have you Moved on past that incident. Do that Got incident still hunt, hunt you to this day? Yeah, it still it still bothers me, bro. Because you know, it's you know the the, the stuff happened in the world. You know, yeah. you know whoever you believe in, you know, put stuff in the world that happens to people. And you know, not why it happened. My my question is why I didn't handle it different. You know, right. why did that affect me that way? That I had to do, you know, all those words and all those tweets. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of people that go through that to this day. And mm -hmm. they, they don't even look at it like that. You know, but I look at it as where I come from and, you know, what I was taught and how, how I came up and that, that layer I put on myself of protection to get me through so many things, bro, to, you know, don't demand respect, don't take no BS. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that layer of that right there got me through so much in life that it was still on me at that moment. And, you know, when I should have been looking at things as I'm winning or I'm in a better position, it could have been a whole different story. My, my, one of my last things, now I know when you said, all right, everybody at Auburn, the love that you have for Auburn is still through the roof. Yeah. A1, one right? Minute. Always was a person that always picked up the phone when I was even working in recruiting back at 18. And if anybody I need to hop on with Whitehead or somebody that, who was mad, who wanted to transfer, who wanted yeah. to do this. It was always that, like, you know, you always was able to get that advice. Yeah. One of the per persons, though, that was huge in your whole development at Auburn was not actually a guy who was on the field with you. No. It was the guy who was off the field. True. And who was that? Brother Chet. Brother Chet Williams. So, yeah. right. So, who is the chaplain for the last, what, 20 years? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And could you say what Brother Chet means to you and your whole deal, even in life still to this day, but what he meant for us to have 
you know, on on on, on campus. I mean, Brother Chet just gave a, was the one person that developed that hope outside of football that you could do something else, that you could be something else. That there is uh, you were Jermaine Whitehead before you put them pads on. You know what I mean? And that that just built so much confidence in who I am as a person and as a man. You know, just those one-on-one -on -one talk we used to have about growing up in Mississippi and he'll tell me somebody else grew up worse than you did. You know, I ain't never had nobody tell me that or mm -hmm. understood that. I thought mm -hmm. I was in the, you know, worse or worse situation. And he was just he was just a beacon of light for me. Man, that's huge. I'm gonna um so tell me this, what message mm. message that with the, having the floor that you would actually say like, hey, my name is Jermaine Whitehead and this is my message to to you, yeah. this is my message to um, the public. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. of who I am and I, the messages of who you are is what we've been talking about. Yeah. But for the you, the, 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 the title of this podcast, The Athlete Never Dies. Really? And I feel like it, it'll never go away. But what that message of the same thing that you, was do, that you do to the little bros at Auburn who call you, or the guy in the league who still who you still check in with who check in um on you who you help out um what is the message that you have to the next generation that somebody can learn from your the, the great things that you have done to the mistakes what is your message how you feel right now at this moment what is your message man you know uh me personally you know just who i am i'm a blessed individual bro that you know been through a lot of my life i always understood my life wasn't my own you know, I was definitely going to be somebody else's story to get to where they needed to go in life. So, you know, with that being said, my message to the youth is, you know, be ready for opportunity and have a plan for adversity. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, that's a broad statement, but, you know, with, with life comes opportunity, but also with life comes adversity. You're going to go through ups and downs. It's going to look worse than what it actually is, and it's going to feel better than what it really is sometimes. So you got to look at the jar half full, half empty. And, and you know just look straight through it they never talk about looking through the glass to what's on the other side mm -hmm. so you got to be able to you know understand that you have goals aspirations you know no matter the emotions that come along with those you just want to get to the other side man I, I i definitely appreciate you yes sir i appreciate the time i appreciate you for coming in and 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 and, and going going in man and yeah. being your authentic honest self man yeah. so yeah. i so on this on this show, we have you try to you try to uh, cheat earlier, man. You tried I tried to, to did You try to take a look at my questions and see what I was going to ask because you know ask. how how deep uh, in, in a conversation that I could be. You know what I'm saying? My so I have seven questions, right? All that right. I'm going to ask everybody, right? Um, something simple. Uh, something light that I feel light, so I may be a little heavy, Whew. but I want your honest opinion, your honest feedback to uh, um, what you think. Yeah. So, the first question, what is your favorite word and why? Man, we've kind of been talking about it today, man. Uh, my favorite word is adversity, you know. Really? Just out of everything I've been through, I think it made me such a strong human being, bro you know, to what I got going on now. I'm in my life trying to get my master's in account. Yeah. And I just understand that, you know, no matter what you what you want to accomplish, it's going to come with good, it's going to come with bad. And, you know, the, the bad are the things that can deter you from what you really want to do. So you got to have a plan for that. You was the top of your class in high school. Definitely. You never had on a 3-5 in college or 3-4? I, I had like 3-2. Three 3-2, two. Three two, okay. Yeah, it was okay. It was right. When I had a 3-2, that was... Boy, we, we shout for joy. <laughs> Never had under a 3-2 yeah. in college. Yeah. And now you're going on to pursue your master's. That's amazing. What's your least favorite word? Uh, failure, bro. Failure. And why? Man, I think, I think we held to such a standard to meet the expectation that when someone do fail, they try to, you know, hide it. They don't, they don't want to talk about those things. And I think that's the thing people grow from more than me telling you my success story. The, the failures of my story really put you in a different place. That's why, that's what, like, that's the first thing I learned from my, you know, older guys in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They failed because they didn't have a grade. 
Mm. That's the first thing I'm going to work on. If it's about grades. So that 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 catapulted me into the situation to get to where I wanted to be in life. Oh man. So we gotta talk more about failure, bro. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because it's necessary. It's necessary. That's what helped the next man. It's ne- Not you making it, what all you went through to make it. Right. Number three, what's the best advice what's the best advice you ever got and from who? Edit them for real. <laughs> <laughs> Best advice I ever got. All right. You know, we always had an edit button inside of ourselves, but I want you to be as honest and authentic as you got. I, it could be something simple from way back when. <laughs> it could be something. Yeah. No. Uh, but I want it honest. I don't want no, give me no, don't give me no hand me down. I say the, the best advice I got came out the Bible, bro. And it's uh, I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You mm-hmm. know? And I think if I would have, you know, had that in my mind in a lot of situations, I wouldn't have looked at them in a the, in the way I did. I just would have, you know, went through them and navigated on, you know, understanding that, you know, the bad is real, the devil is real, and, you know, you know, it's a way to prevail at everything. Do you, what, the, my, my, what, where do you feel like God has been through this whole? Uh, I think God has been right by my side the mm-hmm. whole time. I think, like I said, my life really not my own. Like He kind of put me in position to, you know, grow and understand and show people the real in a lot of situations instead of the fabricated version. Because He knew I I don't I don't cope with the with the you know the glitz and glamour of a lot of things. Right. I, you know, I don't value a lot of things that everybody else value. So he kind of knew I was chasing what I was chasing and, you know, get other people to see it my way. He wanted me to go through some things. Absolutely. And that's tough going through some things in a world that when most people go right, yeah. you, go you're going to go left. Yeah. Yeah. Number four, if you didn't participate in sports, what other profession you would have been in? Man, today I can speak and say a lot of different things, bro. Okay. Uh, podcasting a great one. Okay, shout uh, out to podcast. Shout out to, shout out okay. to the podcast. That's a great one. Uh, you know, my ultimate dream is to become a CPA. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was my plan A when I didn't want to tell people I wanted to be an athlete. You mm-hmm. know, they tell you, uh, no, nah, you, when they ask you if you're going to be an athlete, they say, okay, what else you want to be? Right. So I used to tell people I wanted to be a CPA first. and. I'm a guy that accomplished kind of everything I set my mind to. Uh, that uh, I'm in a trucking industry, bro. Yeah. You know that that's one of the biggest incomes I got right now. Yeah. And man, just in the words just, of uh, just at 17, 16, I didn't understand nothing about that. Bingo. And just Bingo. to grow into this position, bro, and wish I could talk to myself then, mm-hmm. we would have been doing that a long time ago. Absolutely, then, but you already know everything happened for a reason. Everything happened and for a reason. And nothing just happens. Yeah. And it goes back again, it's necessary. Definitely. Like when you understand that your pain, understand that stuff that you don't been through yeah. is so necessary, now you're able to, you know, go into that next uh, um, state. And being in the trucking industry is amazing because, you know, as uh, uh, we know, said his name about four times, Jay Jones' dad always said, Everything you see came off a truck. Really? <laughs> really? You know what I'm saying? So that's <laughs> awesome. All right, next question. What would you tell your younger self? Calm down. You know, you make good decisions. Believe in the decisions you made. You know, love yourself more. Be proud of yourself more. You know, look at your, look at your goals and your accomplishments a little bit more, you know. So you can walk in them rooms and have the confidence that mm, you that you, that really you belong. Need. Yeah, and you saying that a lot of times because that athlete stint never leaves you. Because sometimes you go walk in a room and you have heard it, I have heard it. Oh, he played ball, <laughs> and it's like this. That's the only reason why you're here. But like, no, I got uh-huh. a mind, I got a voice. You know what I'm saying? I, I think this way, I believe this way. You know, um, I, I learned so much from it. Yeah. But you saying that you would tell yourself. To calm down, yeah. understand that you, you're worthy, yeah. love yourself. Elaborate a little bit on that, loving yourself. Uh, just who you are, where you come from, bro. Don't don't be ashamed of it. You know, like I said, when I got to college, it you was such a it was such a culture shock to me that uh, to be around 
white guys in the locker room. To be around white coaches. I never had a white coach. You never coach. had a white coach. I never had Your a white coach. Your first time coach. having a white coach, you was 18 years old. Yeah, and they intellect way different than the, the brother coaches who are going to put their arm around you and right. love you up and, you know, treat you like family. And, you know, so it was it was a different, you know, way to look at things. And, man, that, that was a big culture shock. If Auburn wasn't diverse in the coaching staff, you would not have came to Auburn. Uh, no, I ain't had nothing to do with the coaching staff, mm-hmm. truly, but. No, I'm just saying, saying like, they in didn't. the staff. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Looking they at definitely had staff, to have some brothers. They had to have you some don't, you know Kool-Aid what I'm drinking, <laughs> chicken cooking, <laughs> chitlins on Thanksgiving, guys. Understand <laughs> who my mama yeah. and big mama is and, 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 talk that, and talk that talk. Yeah. So, so imagery is everything then. Definitely. Even definitely. from, yeah. yeah. So, because I think a lot of times that people don't understand that in sports. People don't understand that my first time, I, I, I kind of had to pass because from 15 to 18, you know, 15 to 17, I was around white coaches, mm. white teammates, when I made the switch from making to one Robin. So um, um, Auburn was not a culture shock to me. Yeah. Not, not at all. Not at all. Like, I, I kind of was... One Robbins was a culture shock to me. <laughs> okay. You know what so I'm you saying? You have been through that. Auburn wasn't. Yeah. But I always imagined if I would have came from Macon straight into <laughs> Auburn, yeah. culture shock, I probably would have been scared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you know, I was so driven by not wanting to get sent home or not wanting to go back home right. empty handed that I was so goal driven. But man, a lot of that stuff, as far as being up at the 6 a.m. and going to study hall for. Mm-hmm four and five hour after a three and three hour practice that, you know, a lot of that stuff was way different than out the norm for me, but you know, I just didn't want to go home. I wanted to excel, bro. And I just did it to the best of my ability. Those Mississippi roots got you through. You feel what I'm saying? For real, I mean, you know, just being able to, you know, take whatever come with it and, you know, wanting to accomplish my goal. That's it. Okay. One of my favorite questions I ask a lot of people. Uh Uh-oh. Love or loyalty and why? Love or loyalty, and why? So, man, to me, honestly, uh, you know, it's about the loyalty. You know, the loyalty is is real love. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, no matter how much, you know, love can come and go. Love is a, a choice. Mm-hmm. Loyalty is something you're gonna do no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. I think you know my parents were. My mom, for sure, was loyal to me. No matter what, she tried to do the best she could for me. You know what I'm saying? That portrayed an unconditional love. True, it did. <clears throat> but I knew that, okay. She's going to be loyal I to me. Not, I'm wrong, right? Right, whatever. I could not go to her with something. Whatever yeah. whatever the problem was, I could go to her and, and get it off my chest. And that bond is so tight. Yeah. I always say that mother and father, I mean, a mother and son bond is so tight. They have to yeah. cut you, yeah. you know, apart when, you, when, when you're born. Yeah. My last question, uh, what does Athlete Never Dies mean to you? Man, it's, it's the mentality and that's, that's born and built into athletes, bro. The, the daily grind, the details of work, the habits that a lot of people don't have, bro. Like just being in the world and, you know, having different standards from different people that, you know, want to accomplish tasks and goals, everything being, you know, a goal for me kind of kind of led me to look at life different bro and i think you know being an athlete lets you look at life in a way that you know no one else get to see it as far as you know you sacrificing your time effort for that friday night you know Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that Mm -hmm. what all you go through to get to those friday or saturdays or sundays and you know and you get to take that with you on through life bro and uh, i think i think some of the best leaders are athletes right and this uh, and i say and you're uh, um, fraternity guy, you yeah, know what I'm definitely. saying? Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I say uh, uh, that sports is the biggest definitely. fraternity <laughs> that you could ever be a part of. And a lot of times when I say that, a lot of people assume NFL. Mm-mm. But no, I'm like sports. If you yeah. play middle school, high school, you know what I'm saying? Was able to go to college. Yeah. Because I feel like that's, it's... That's why my vendetta be with people that never played and got the most opinion about gotcha. sports. Because, gotcha. you know, like, if you ever been through that situation mm-hmm. and ever had to tackle the biggest back 
in football, you'll understand that, okay, he just ready the next time up. It's going to be a, yeah. another opportunity for him to prove you wrong or prove you right. Right. So I think that's why, you know, that's a fraternity there because we all kind of been through that same struggle as the, you know, ups and the downs. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it ain't about you being smart or making good grades. Yeah, you know? no. It's the education. Yeah. Away from yeah, from from, from the books, book. yeah. and the education of like what people say. You know, speaking of that, like the big bats, have a plan. Have a plan. <laughs> right. you, you better you better have a plan yeah. because some of my the best some of the some of not all, but a lot of times most of the best coaches play play definitely because they know or got what a, you or a good players coach or got a good players mentality. So yeah. that's what that's really what it takes, bro. You gotta you gotta see through the mind of a player. Cause yeah. having Tracy Rocker, that was just like, <laughs> I mean, that dude, he was be watching film head and go, he was like, what we supposed to do right here? He go, oh, you out there, figure it out. Right. <laughs> Only thing I need you to do is play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Right. <laughs> like you figure it out. And so, but but right. to go back on, that's the freedom that you was looking for. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You, you was looking for that freedom. Like, ah, I can go out here and figure it out. Man. And if I mess up, he gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? He gonna take the heat if I mess up. But yeah. at the same time, he with me. Yeah, he, he know like, yeah. He, he gonna chew me out, but he gonna go up to that to, to upstairs and he gonna take the heat. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was able to interview. My first interview uh, was with DeAndre Smelter, okay. right? Who was my cousin, who I love, and we was in the interview. And at one point, we got up. It was over, and I was like, "Yo, D, you play with Cap?" He was like, "Yeah." I was like. You want to talk about it? Because I know it's kind of, it, it was so controversial that people kind of run from it sometimes. Yeah. And um, and he was like, he just shot back that because he was he was on his way to go somewhere. He was like, no, nah, I got time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what I'm leading into, and I got some questions, but what I'm leading into is everybody that I have met, I know that played with Colin Kaepernick has another side of the story. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like, it's almost like they're protecting their brother. Like, no, I'm going to let you know that, that like, yo, this was about this. This was like, how did it get here? So I got a few questions. You All know right. what I'm saying? My bot cap. <laughs> and Cap my frat brother, baby. Oh, he, I didn't know he was a cap as well? Yes, sir. Yo, okay. Um, what do you think when you think of the name Colin Kaepernick? Uh... I think visionary, bro. I think leader. I think, uh, you know, just a, a man who just came to that awakening and, and saw the, the U.S. as something that us in the South kind of been seeing the whole time. Bingo. And when you, when you, when you think of that, like, because I never even heard somebody put it in that, but, but you from Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yo, there's a lot of stuff that it wasn't a shock. Like, even some of the stuff that you were seeing as far as, um, and this is not any way of you saying that everybody who has a uniform is yeah. terrible or anything like that, but you, from your experience, from your upbringing, you have saw some unjust, you know, some unjust um, happens. Mm -hmm. So what type of legacy that you feel like uh, Colin left? Man, that was big impact on not just football, but like the world. You know what I mean? Like, cause I mean, true enough, you know, we I've been I got partners that lost their life to police before. I got people that's had drugs planted on them or been killed in the street. So, you know what I'm saying? That I feel like that light on the world is why we got the Tamir Rice's, the George Floyds, the uh Trayvon Martin stories yeah. out there now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why it's in racism, racism at the end of every end zone. If you go look out there this season, he ain't played in a few years. Mm -hmm. But he just brought that, being a quarterback in the league, he just brought that platform and, and made it one that we got to speak on. DeAndre said something that made sense. Mm -hmm. And only you could be the one that confirmed it. So okay. I'm going to put the pressure on. <laughs> right? He said that the media said that Kaepernick was a distraction that led to um, you guys having a bad record. And he goes, 
Oh, it was just a bad team. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, I've been on good teams, I've been on bad yeah. team. That particular year we just had it, it was a, it was a bad team. So Cap with Cap, was it a bad team or the scratch? Uh that team was a bad team, bro. Yeah. We was in a good division. Uh we played Seattle was probably one, at their most dominant time in the Reasonable. league. Yeah, they were yeah. so dominant at the time, bro, yeah. that you know, they were gonna kinda win the division anyway, but you know, Cap just definitely got the brunt of that through the media, bro, because we weren't performing on the field, but nah, he was he was definitely wasn't in the locker room with his fists up or he really was kinda <laughs> yeah. to himself and kinda, you know, talking on the phone to his people to get his message across and what he would say. But nah, he he didn't have that message in the locker room or try to make nobody buy into that. Was it Mitt Sentinels in the locker room? Like, what, did you kind of feel like it was some guys over here and then some guys over here? Or was it just, hey, everybody voicing how they feel? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, at the time it was, I was there, it was a kind of small issue. So I don't know what happened when they got to the yeah, national crazy. stage. But yeah, he was sitting down and taking a knee and doing all that stuff. So at the time, you know, no one really side eyed him or did because he was the high paid player on the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. He kind of had been to a Super Bowl. So he had the right and power to do. What he wanted to what do. What he wanted to do. Yeah. How do you feel that, uh, what would you say if you was in out those shoes? Let's say, like, if you was a, a man of power, right? And you got this power and you, and you represent the NFL and you represent the front office mm-hmm. of the league. And you hearing that there's a quarterback in San Francisco, Kaepernick, mm-hmm. that who was basically was like the face of this league, you know, just a few years back, and still a very relevant player. Um, he's taking the stand uh, for social justice, mm-hmm. right? What would you have done and how you would have treated that situation? Like, you you got all the power. You're in power. You're in control. How would you have acted in that situation? Uh, I mean, you know, I would have judged him on – you know, his ability on the field and how that would affect my team. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, I kind of would have brought him in and let him know that, you know, if this your initiative, let's come up with the right plan to do okay. such thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, let's agree to it and let me be on your side, you know, because right. if you do stuff just because you want to do it, then I do have a, a vendetta against what you did. But, you know, if, if that was something he talked about with Upper Power, that, hey, I'm, I'm sitting because of X, Y, and Z, you know, whether you like it or not, and that's something that they know, I think they got to live with it. Absolutely. And what do you uh, what do you feel like, you know, we know that, you know, people because the flag got into it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I grew up in a, my exposure to Warner Robins was is a military uh, background. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, mil- military town. So uh, you was hearing even, I knew the like when he was doing it, I was like, OK. You just knowing the, the, the how political it could get, how the narrative could, could change, and you're like, I yeah. don't know if he come from that narrative. Nah, that's that was a strictly money money thing. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? They, you know they. The reason in any other sport in college, you never heard the national anthem. You ain't even on the field when they played the national no, anthem. No, never. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That it was a money thing to have the, the football players out there saluting the flag. You know that happened. I don't know what year, but. You know, they brought us out there and started doing that. So that was a kind of money thing. So that's not something that the NFL always had no, they, in the they history didn't of always do that. No. Was it 10 years old by the time it Cap was on? Probably about 10 years yeah. old to, to, to a degree. And um, and and I never I never even um, knew that. Yeah. I thought that was just something that – because when you think of it, in college, we, didn't, we don't stand out on the field. Maybe your captains are out there. Or do you, is the, is the captains out there? No, I ain't never been no captain. <laughs> 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 I'm, the most, I'm, the, I'm the best and most liked player on the team. I, you know, I got voter camera. They ain't even give it to me. They didn't give it to you? You talking about 14? Yeah, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Because they do, like, honorary captains and all that stuff now. I've never been there. So Colin Kaepernick is not only a fraternity brother, but it's somebody that when he was going through that and the changes – you know, my last question with it is, when he was going through that and the changes, you know, uh, that was going on, he was forcing change. Do you feel like where he's at now, do you feel do you feel bad for Cap in a sense of like he made this big push uh, for, 
for social gestures and he never was able to, he had to go do private workouts and he had to talk about this. He just probably got to a point that he really just wanted to play ball. Um, how do you, like, how do you feel about, like, you know, do you feel bad for Cap or do you feel that, you know, he's at peace? I definitely feel, I feel bad for him, bro, because, you know, it's never should have got to that level. I mean, it's major things that go on in the NFL that they push and shove to the side and sweep under the rug. But, you know, they just, that was a guy, you know, they wanted to make an example out of him, bro. Well, you know, I done been that guy before. Yeah. And, you know, they, they kind of give it, give it to you on the platter just to take it away. This is my last question. This time, like like the past, this is my last question. This time, the, my, the, I would say, what would be your uh, message to people who may think different about the whole cap situation? Who made them different? Who and, may uh, think different? Oh. Or looked at the situation different, or said that you know they was very because it, it got very emotional and, and political. Uh, oh, what, 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 what would it, you it's say? Kinda, it's kind of like LeBron say, no, we're not going to just shut up and dribble. Right. You know, uh, who if he don't speak up for it, who will? You mm. know, if the LeBron don't speak up for it, who will? And, you know, all the other quarterbacks in the league that were prominent at the time, no offense, were white. So, I mean, of course, they don't understand our plight the way a black man. <sighs> yeah, yeah, because I, the, one of the most difficult things that you could ever do in life is, one of, is be black. And be successful. And be powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and have a voice. And have a voice. Yeah. Because you can't take this off. No. You can't take this off. And if you're doing what you're doing in trucking, you could be the first black to do X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's like, you know, where I got from it is, you know, hearing from people who played with him, it gives a whole different perspective. I always support it, you know, yeah. uh, Cap, because those people like from the Trayvon Martins and and, and, and the different um, situations that came on with with, with uh, these uh, black bodies that was that was being you know um, you know terminated you know what I'm saying um, you the best way I could put it is you understand that each time that happened that that could have been me that could have been me and I feel like the the biggest fear as a black man is understanding that you're gonna have black kids. Yeah. And understanding no matter what you teach in this house, that when they go outside this house, that everybody ain't gonna see the world like they see the world. I'm, I'm so scared to have kids. Yeah, y'all, I said, we don't have, I don't have kids. And that's I'm the scared. first thing that you think like, man, how you gotta, and being from the South, it's not like we, we, we here, we from New York, no disrespect to any other state, but we're from the South. Right. When you think of civil rights and all this, like we from, everybody that was a leader, they from where we from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Truly. We see the same thing that they see. So I just felt like uh, I just want to have that conversation. But I really do uh, appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate the conversation, man. And, yeah. and, and, I, and I thank you, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Love you, boy. Love you, my yeah. dog. My guy. That's a wrap. For my man, M. Basic, cut. Break. You trying to get it.